Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from dancetube.tv and on my channel you can expect brutally honest tech reviews so if you're not subscribed then make sure to subscribe and smash the notification bell. In today's episode I will be breaking down the 17 best tips and settings that you need to know for your Mavic Air 2. So I'll be going through the menu from safety, control, camera and transmission just to let you guys know all the key features tips and settings that you need to know. The first thing that we're going to focus on is the safety settings. So once you load up your menu, look out for max distance under the safety menu, and this will be set to no limit by default. So what you want to do is you want to pull it down as far as you can. So if you're a first time flyer, or if you've got a friend or a family member or someone that wants to fly your drone for the first time, this is a really good setting to use because it means that you can actually cap how far they can fly away from the controller. So really pull it down as far as you want, find a nice open field, and then that means that you've got full control over how far the drone can actually fly away from you. And it's just a really good safety protocol to have at hand if you want to start learning how to fly the drone and testing a few different settings. The next setting that we're gonna focus on in the safety tab is the return to home altitude or RTH altitude. So by default, I believe that this is set to 30 meters, but I highly recommend bumping it up to either 60 or 80 meters. Another really handy setting is the update home point in the safety tab. So this can be really useful if you go to a new location and as the drone takes off, you then update the home point so that it knows that this is the new location. Another example is if you're flying somewhere and you start walking in that same location to somewhere else, bring your drone back and then update the home point so that it's gonna to return to that new home point and not the previous point that you were standing at. The final safety tip that I have for you guys before we move on to the control tips and settings is actually to close out of the menu altogether and go back to the screen where you see your camera feed and then tap on takeoff permitted in the top left corner and this will actually bring up your pre-flight check and this will give you some quick easy options to adjust while on the fly. So a lot of the safety options are actually still available through this new menu, but then you can format your card through here as well. And this interface here will also display any error messages that are popping up. Now, if we bump back into the menu and then click on the control settings, we now have a few more settings in here that we can tweak and improve your overall flight experience. So the first thing is switching between follow mode and FPV mode. So by default, follow mode is probably the one you're gonna to want to use the most, but FPV mode gives you a really unique filming perspective. So it actually allows the gimbal to follow the movement of the drone, which creates a really dynamic viewing experience for your audience. So play around with the FPV mode. It actually does give a unique perspective and something that is fun to play around with. So follow mode is probably your go-to, but FPV mode is a lot of fun as well. The next setting you want to enable if you haven't enabled it already is allow upward gimbal rotation. And this basically allows your gimbal to tilt up past the zero degree mark all the way up to 24 degrees. Today's episode has been proudly sponsored by TechScore. They aim to be everyone's one-stop destination for finding the best tech deals right as they occur online. And they have a really wide range of partners that you can actually shop through. So they have Gearbest, Walmart, Amazon, Microsoft and AliExpress, just to name a few. And basically if you purchase through the TechScore site, then you actually have cashback rewards which can be redeemed for daily prizes. So it's a really awesome way to buy your tech because you're then getting rewarded for buying the tech that you already would be buying and you're going through trusted merchants. So it's a really secure, fun way to buy your tech. And if you actually sign up now with my link in the description below, then you can specify that you were referred by dancetube.tv. Now back into the control settings, another really handy setting is just enabling phone charging. And as the name implies, it charges your phone. Final setting under the control tab is the double tap FN. So FN stands for function, and you have a little bit of control here to change to a few different options. But it's really handy to have the double tap FN as 
the recenter gimbal. So this means that your gimbal can point directly down and then double tapping it will point it directly back to that midpoint, that center point facing forward. Now moving on to the camera settings in your menu interface. The first thing is swapping over to D-Cine like if you want a flatter profile with more dynamic range and more information when it comes to post-production. Another setting that I love to enable is the histogram and this just gives you a little bit more of a visual representation of what's going on in the scene. It tells you how the mid-tones are looking, the shadows and the highlights. So educate yourself online of how to read the histogram. This is not the video for it right here, but really useful to have as a visual representation. And then I also always seem to enable the overexposure warning, which is the zebra patterns, and that will basically let you know what's overexposed in the shot. I find that the histogram and the overexposure warning actually complement each other really nicely, and they work extremely well when I'm out on the field filming. I also always enable the grid lines, and this just gives me a representation of the rule of thirds, and to really understand what's going on in the scene. So some people don't like this, but the grid lines make it easier for me to visually see what's happening in the scene. Another thing that I'd recommend to take your production to the next level is really just playing around with the manual camera settings. So again, this is going to be dependent on the weather conditions, the location, what's going on in the scene. But for the most part, the, the main rule is to make sure that if you're shooting at 25p or 25 frames per second, you make sure that your shutter speed is either 50, 100, 150 or 200. So it has to be an increment of that frame rate to ensure that it's the smoothest shot possible. And then just play around with the ISO and obviously the shutter speed as well, just to get the most out of the scene. And having the histogram and the overexposure warning will really just allow you to visually see if that is the right setting to have. The next camera setting that I'd recommend checking out is the adjust white balance manually. So if you bump it up higher in the manual settings, it's gonna be a lot more yellow. And if you pull it down, then it's gonna be a lot more blue. So you just make sure that you adjust this to the appropriate setting for the particular scene you're shooting. And this just means that you have a lot more of a manual process when you go to the location and you shoot. And the next camera related settings are back on your video feed. And this is if you wanna keep it in auto. If you don't wanna go with manual, then you do have a little bit of control in the auto settings. So in the bottom right corner, you will see EV and AE. So EV is exposure and AE is auto exposure. So if you adjust the EV with the little dial there and then lock the AE based on on the scene and if you're happy with the actual exposure of that scene you can then lock that AE so that it doesn't keep adjusting when the scene and the lighting changes and then the final two settings that I'd recommend checking out are back in the menu and they're under the transmission section so the first thing is definition so you've got definition smooth and definition HD now by default it's set at HD or high definition but if you're having issues with the video feed cutting out then just switch that over to smooth and you'll notice a significantly better experience. Another thing that I'd recommend is checking out the manual channel mode. So if you're having issues again with interference, then you can switch it over to the manual channel mode and then you can adjust with your finger by tapping and dragging along to see which channel has the least interference. And this is a really nice visual way to see what's going on in the area as well with all the transmission feeds that are getting sent out that our human eye cannot see at all. But anyway guys, that is the end of this video. So thank you so much, beautiful internet family for tuning in to another danstube.tv video. Remember, brutally honest tech reviews on the channel, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. But this was my 17 tips and settings that you need to know about the Mavic Air 2 before you take off. Make sure you have a look through all of the settings and really familiarize yourself with what this drone is capable of doing. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to have a fantastic day and peace out.